the election that is taking place in Karnataka is not merely about electing one more government to rule for five years. These are small things. These happen routinely in any democracy. This election is different. This election is like Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra, which is classically the battle between good and evil. This is Kurukshetra for between not between parties, it's not Congress, BJP. These are just the faces. It is a battle between those who want to dismantle this republic and those who want to save the soul of India. If BJP is defeated in Karnataka, that sets the tone and tenor of 2024 elections. Because in the last nine years, we have witnessed attempts at destroying our country's constitution, democratic institutions, and constitutional values. Recently, we have also seen some attempts at resisting and reviving. Karnataka will decide whether those who want to save the soul of India, they have the upper hand, or those who want to destroy, they have the upper hand. So in that sense, it's Korova and Pandavas. It is the battle of virtue, battle of goodness. Sir, uh, there is this Always in the elections, there is a speculation about tampering of EVMs. What's your take on it? We need to be vigilant. Uh, recently, some reports came from Election Commission that 37% uh, EVMs were found damaged. I think Election Commission should give more details to the public. Which were these EVMs? In which elections were they used? And how are they going to ensure that something similar does not happen in Karnataka election? And I would also say to all the activists, workers at the booth level, please do your vigilance. Please arrive at the booth one hour before voting begins. And please do not leave till half an hour after the polling when you have signed and sealed. So yes, we have to take precaution, but the election commission also has to be kept under watch. Sir, you have given a call uh, to vote for Congress. Uh, wherever uh, it is, I mean, directly, uh, I mean, fighting with BJP. I mean, how it is uh, democratic? We have given a clear call to say that the regime must change. BJP must be defeated. But we are not limiting ourselves to that. We are saying that if places where Congress is the strongest force to defeat the BJP, we should actively work for the Congress. If someone else can defeat the BJP, we should support that part. We are not tied. Yadulu Karnataka is not tied to Congress party. We are saying anyone who can help this battle of saving this country at this critical moment. Parties don't. Dala don't, doesn't matter. Desh matters. This is what we are. Have you uh, conducted any talks with the BJP or Congress leaders? I mean... Uh, for example, if there is a triangular uh, uh, competition is like that, I mean, to avoid such a triangular competition. Uh, some friends have put in a lot of effort. Yes, it is true. In a critical election like this, we must ensure every vote that does not go to the BJP should go towards defeating the BJP. Every vote that does not go to the BJP should go to the leading candidate who can defeat the BJP. Uh, and many friends have been speaking and actually have had good success in persuading many small formations, many small groups to withdraw their candidate. Although the date for nomination and withdrawal is over, we would still continue our effort to ensure that some of the candidates who may be in a position to damage the prospects of anti-BJP forces, we should persuade them. This is our duty. It's our national duty. Sir, so, Edelu Karnataka uh, cadres are uh, working on the ground. So, uh, what is the mood of the voters? Uh, so far, what we see is uh, people are angry. They are angry above all because of corruption and incompetence. People at the ground level talk about 40% Sarkara. Uh, farmers are unhappy because they feel that uh, this government has not done anything for the farmers. Farmers are unhappy because the laws, that the three laws which have been repealed at the center have not been repealed in Karnataka. Dalits are unhappy because the government is playing games with them. These reservation games are being played. Minorities are unhappy because they feel 
that they have been made insecure because there is atrocities against them. They are being targeted. Common man and common woman is unhappy because of price rise, because of inflation, because of corruption. So we see unease and anger all over Karnataka. And uh, I do think that this would this is not just normal anti-incumbency. This is stronger than that. And it should result in a very clear and decisive verdict in Karnataka. From 27th onwards, uh, Amit Shah and Modi are going to uh, come for the election campaign. Do you think any uh, impact will be there? This is not for the first time that Amit Shah and Modi are coming to Karnataka. They came last time also. So they come every time. That's a standard factor. Uh, and yes, this time the BJP voters need Amit Shah and Modi more than ever before because at the local level, there is really no one to look up to. So a BJP voter is dejected. BJP worker morale is down. So yes, Amit Shah and Modi can you know lift the morale of the BJP worker. But will they make a difference to ordinary voters? No. Ordinary voters have seen enough. And this time, I, I want Amit Shah to come. And I actually want Modi to come and campaign again and again and again in Karnataka. So that on 13th of May, when we see the result, we get to see what is Modi magic, what is the reality of Modi magic, I want to see that.